Friends, welcome to Spiritual Calisthenics. Today, on August 5th, we commemorate the four feasts of the Transfiguration of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as well as St. Efsignius, the Martyr of Antioch, our Righteous Father Eugene of Ayatollah, and St. Ephemius, Patriarch of Constantinople. So, regarding St. Efsignius, this martyr was from Antioch and had become a soldier from the time of the reign of Constantius Chlorus, father of St. Constantine the Great, to that of Julian the Apostate. He censured Julian's ungodliness and reminded him that he was the nephew of St. Constantine the Great, the first Christian emperor. He reminded him further that from his tender youth he had been nourished on the milk of piety and instructed in the faith of Christ, had been a fellow student of Basil the Great and Gregory the Theologian, had been a reader of the Church of Nicomedia, and that had he had set all these things at naught and become a transgressor of the promises made in his divine baptism, and had offered to the idols the adoration that is due God alone. Reminding the apostate of all these things and reproving him, he was beheaded in the year 361, having lived altogether 110 years and had been a soldier for more than 60. Your martyr, O Lord, in his courageous contest for you, received as the prize of the crowns of incorruption and life from you, our immortal God. For since he possessed your strength, he cast down the tyrants and wholly destroyed the demon's strengthless presumption. O Christ God, by his prayer, save our souls since you are merciful. As to man of godly mind and our martyr of true piety, the day the church does give honor and glory to the supremely wise Ifsignius in this all hallowed contest, thus she prays, as she ever cries out, by his prayers preserve your lowly servants, O you who are greatly merciful. Can you imagine that courage to stand up to the emperor and remind him of his own upbringing? You, O emperor, who were raised with St. Basil the Great and Gregor the Theologian in education, with the great three hierarchs, and yet you reject the faith. The epistle today is for St. Ifsignius from St. Peter's Universal Letter. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the exiles of the dispersion of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, chosen and destined by God the Father, and sanctified by the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ, and for sprinkling with his blood. May grace and peace be multiplied to you, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith may be more precious than gold, which, though perishable, is tested by fire. They redound to praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Without having known him, you love him. Though you do not see him, you believe in him, and rejoice with unutterable and exalted joy. As the outcome of your faith, you obtain the salvation of your souls. The prophets who prophesied of the grace that was to be yours searched and inquired about this salvation. They inquired what person or time was indicated by the Spirit of Christ within them, when predicting the sufferings of Christ and the subsequent glory. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves, but you, and the things which have now been announced to you by those who preach the good news to you through the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. Therefore, good up your minds, be sober, set your hope fully upon the grace that is coming to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ, as obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct, since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Holy means set apart. Aios, holy, means a, opposite ye, not of this earth, something that is separate, something that is completely apart from earthly things. For if you invoke as father him who judges each one impartially according to his deeds, Conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your fathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest at the end of the time for your sake. Through him you have confidence in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere love that is of the brethren, love one another earnestly from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable seeds, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God, 
For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. Grass withers, and the flower falls. The word of the Lord abides forever. The word of the good news which was preached to you. So put away all malice and all guile and insincerity and envy and all slander like newborn babes. Long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation. For you have tasted the kindness of the Lord. Come to him, to the living stone rejected by men, but in God's sight chosen and precious. And like living stones, be yourselves built into spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and he who believes in him will not be put to shame. To you, therefore, who believe, he is precious. For those who do not believe, the very stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner, a stone that will make men stumble, a rock that will make them fall. For they stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, that you may declare the wonderful deeds of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were no people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. On the eighth Friday after Pentecost, at that time the disciples asked Jesus, Then why did the scribes say that first Elijah must come? He replied, Elijah does come, and he is to restore all things. But I tell you that Elijah has already come, and they did not know him, but did to him whatever they pleased. So also the Son of Man will suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was speaking to them of John the Baptist. And when they came to the crowd, a man came up to him and kneeling before him said, Lord, have mercy on my son, who is an epileptic and suffers terribly. For often he falls into the fire and often into the water, and they brought him to your disciples, and they could not heal him. And Jesus answered, O faithless and perverse generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him here to me. Jesus rebuked him. The demon came out of him, and the boy was cured instantly. This great healing that Jesus Christ enacts is very, very important for our spiritual salvation because this epileptic boy uh, is indicative. Uh, Matthew is putting him here on purpose to show that this boy represents all of us, that we are all in a way demon possessed. Uh, because although it says epileptic, what we're really looking at is a demon possessed boy, and that the demon is trying to kill the boy by throwing him either into water or into fire. And these two images are very, very important because in the water symbolizes anxiety. Uh, when we're drowning, when we're in depression, where we're basically up to here with worries and duties and just can't catch a break. And so it's very easy to despair and to fall into that water to feel like drowning. I can't do it. Versus fire, which represents our passions. And our passions, when raging out of control, can burn us up like a conflagration, whether it's lust or... Uh, gluttony, or idleness, or pride, or envy, or vainglory. All of these things can destroy us when they rage out of control, the fires of our passions. And these are the two ways that demons try to get us, either by making us too hot with our passions, or making us despair with, with depression and anxiety and water. The so fire and water. And these are how the demons try to get us. Now, the next gospel passage will show us uh, how we deal with that. Prayer and fasting, these are how we combat these things. Uh, tomorrow, of course, is going to be uh, Transfiguration, Metamorphosis, so it will not be uh, that specific reading for tomorrow. I hope that you've enjoyed today's spiritual calisthenics. Blessed and wonderful day.